Hi, it's Dr. Ronald Litt. I'd like to present to you the abdominal injury lecture from our trauma team training series. Abdominal injury is initially assessed, like all injury, through the primary survey. You must check the airway, the breathing, the circulation. Hemorrhage control in circulation can be relevant to the abdomen. Disability and exposure. Exposure, you need to look at the abdomen from all aspects. Resuscitation, secondary survey, transfer for definitive care. Definitive care may include laparotomy. Exposure, E. You look for bruising, hematomas, seat belt sign, penetrating wounds, with or without external hemorrhage and their location gunshot wounds versus stabbing injuries, blast injuries. Turn the patient on the side to examine the back and flanks. Only after resuscitation and stabilization has occurred will you do your secondary survey. The anatomy is very important in abdominal injury. The signs of pain and tenderness are associated with which organ is injured, and this depends on the location. The abdomen is divided into a peritoneal cavity and retroperitoneum. The retroperitoneum we'll discuss later. The peritoneal cavity is divided into different sectors. There's the intrathoracic abdomen. It's covered by the bony thorax and diaphragm. It's located in this upper part of the abdomen. It includes the liver, spleen, transverse colon, stomach, and diaphragm. Then there's the abdominal segment, where we have our small intestine, the sigmoid colon, and the stomach, located here. And finally, we have the pelvic abdomen, with the bladder, rectum, iliac vessels, female internal genitalia, and bony pelvis. Behind the peritoneal cavity is the retroperitoneum, which encases the aorta, the vena cava, the pancreas, the kidney, the left and the right colon, and the duodenum. Penetrating abdominal trauma. You need to think about the type of injury. You need to look and describe the entrance and the exit wounds. What's the time interval since injury? Almost all abdominal stab and gunshot wounds will need surgery. Regardless of the mechanism, it is important to inquire as to, to the degree and location of any abdominal pain and relate that to their anatomy. And if there is referral of the pain to the shoulder, the concept that there should could be intraabdominal blood. The abdominal physical examination. Exposure. You percuss. It's more useful than auscultation. Gentle tapping can help define subtle changes of peritoneal irritation and location of trauma. Localize the site of maximum tenderness, which may indicate a specific injury. Shifting dullness can suggest intraabdominal hemorrhage. Palpation. Obvious peritoneal irritation, guarding, strongly suggests an intraabdominal injury. Rebound tenderness may help to distinguish between abdominal wall tenderness and intraabdominal peritoneal irritation. Look for masses, such as a pregnant uterus or an enlarged liver. The rectal exam and the vaginal exam you look for frank blood. It means possible bowel injury, altered sphincter tone, possible neurological injury, displayed prostate, possible urethral tear. Look for external and internal local abnormalities. The genitalia. Look for ecchymosis of the scrotum or the labia. Blood at the urethral meatus. This suggests either direct trauma or indirect trauma from a pelvic fracture. 
assess pelvic stability. Pressure on the iliac crest. If there's iliac movement and or pain, it suggests a pelvic fracture. Pressure on the symphysis reveals a defect or elicits pains, suggests a suprapubic fracture. When unstable pelvis occurs, there can be a huge loss of blood. Apply pelvic binders immediately, especially with hypotension. Take an anterior posterior pelvic x-ray. Important ancillary management. Nasal gastric intubation. It prevents aspiration, reduces abdominal distension, which impairs respiration. There's some warning about using it in basal skull fractures, but I think it's a little bit overrated. Also, urinary catheters. You want to measure the urinary output. You could look for hematuria as well. Beware of urethral injuries, perform a rectal exam, and consider a suprapubic if you think there is a serious injury of the urethra. Ancillary evaluations. Focused abdominal sonography, FAST. Looking for intraperitoneal free fluid has become much more popular in Africa recently. FAST is better than shifting dullness to find intraperitoneal fluid. It's fast, it's reliable, and it's repeatable. Children. The etiology of injury in children is usually falls or road traffic injury, but you must be aware of child abuse as well. Children have less protection because of their thoracic cavity is more mobile, they are hemodynamically instable, and FAST is of limited value in children. At the same time, CT scan has a risk of inducing cancer. With compression injuries, suspect pancreas or duodenal injuries in children. 90% of blunt injuries in children can be treated conservatively, but requires close observation. Transfer for definitive management. Assure the patient has been resuscitated and stabilized. Establish a clear airway, adequate ventilation, large bore IVs for high fluid rate, blood group and cross match, monitor and establish adequate urinary output, and send a handover note or phone. Laparotomy. It's the surgical exposure of the abdominal contents and the repair of any pathology or injury. It is a good means of controlling hemorrhage. Patients are transferred for laparotomy within a few hours. There's usually a bit of time for transfer. If there's been successful initial management and ongoing resuscitation has been implemented. Key points for abdominal injury. Carefully adhere to initial assessment and resuscitation. Determine the need for surgery rather than the exact injury. Repeat the abdominal examination at regular intervals as important intra-abdominal injury may not initially be obvious. Have a high index of suspicion in major trauma cases for occult bleeding and for retroperitoneal injuries.